Good morning and a warm welcome from here in Shropshire. Um, you may have watched a few videos and thought, well I'd like to grow some flowers that I can cut and take into the house, but I haven't got the space. So if you're asking yourself, how much space will I need to have cut flower patch, then I think you're asking the wrong question. That might have been impertinent of me to say you're asking the wrong question, but really it's not about how much space you've got, it's what you want to do with it and what you want to produce out of it that is a question. Because if you want to produce enough flowers to fill a vase each week, that's a completely different ball game to if you want to be selling 10 bouquets at your garden gate every week. You need much, many, much more space and many more flowers to create several bouquets than you do to create one for yourself. So you need to know what you will be happy with. And if you're looking at just one or two flower bouquets for your house each week, then the space you need is really quite small and can probably fit in into your own garden that you've got now. Let me show you. This is a four meter bed, four meter by one meter bed, so four meter squared. Um, and, and yes, it's got all of the biennials in there at the moment, and it's full. However, there is more flowers than I possibly need for one floral arrangement in the house a week. So the sweet rocket that is at the bottom here, which is now finished, there is probably, and I should have counted up before I started the video, but I think there's maybe about nine plants there. I have had armfuls and armfuls of flowers from this, much more than I ever need and as you can see, a lot of it has now just gone to seed. Um, so it needs to be cut back. That's taken up maybe just more than a metre of the bed. The Sweet Williams, again, taking up probably a metre and a half of this bed. And there are probably maybe 12 plants, more than enough for me to make an arrangement, especially when you tie it in with other flowers that are around, such as the lupins and achilleas and alliums that are around. So more than enough that's needed. So I could half that and still have ample for probably the three weeks that they're in flower, I would still have ample. So we could go down to 50 centimetres and that would be enough. The same with the honesty. I could take that down to enough plants, maybe three plants, fill 50 centimetres, 50 centimetres of sweet William, so that's a metre, and that is probably enough for a reasonable flower arrangement. On the end here, we've had a rather big display of some cornflower, which are these ones here. So they took up about a metre of the bed. We've now got two plants of the Campanula, which is kind of irrelevant because I'm not sure they can be used. But we've had wallflower and we've had honesty. So that's just at this time of the year. Prior to that, I had this bed with tulips. Now again, if I'm just making a bouquet, one bouquet, a a week, then you could fit in 50 centimetres 
quite a few I think it was I counted up I could have got maybe 10 15 tulips in there well that's potentially well at least two arrangements if you then tie them up with some other flowers that were flowering at that time um, then you are looking at a good arrangement so if we go back in what has happened this year when the tulips were flowering the honesty was also flowering as was the wallflower so if you took well, let's say a meter <laughs> so 50 centimeters for the tulips 50 centimeters for the honesty and wallflower that's a meter in total you have got three weeks worth of flowers at least I would have said following on from that came the sweet rocket and then the sweet William um, but at the same time as the sweet rocket the lupins were starting and the peonies were starting and some of the roses so again if you reduce the sweet Williams and the sweet rocket to a meter then that's two meters you've used and that's got another month's worth of flowers in there we'll come back to the lupins and roses that I mentioned in a minute now if as you can see from this you plant some hardy annuals of which there are many so there's cornflowers there is the nigella that we've got over there also last year so you could have some amimagus you can have snapdragons the larks larks but all lots of them that could you lots to choose from that you could plant in the autumn of the previous year that will be up and growing and flowering at this point in time so within if you will give yourself a meter for that so we're now up to three meters so we've got a meter for the tulips honesty and sweet william a meter not with sweet william um, wallflowers a meter for the hardy annuals that you said the previous year a meter for the the sweet rocket and the sweet williams and then by this point the tulips the honesty and the wallflowers are finished so you can lift those and start putting in this year's crop of annuals at the point of this honesty and sweet williams finishing then you can put in another crop of hardy annuals so that's three meters that we're using and we would have had flowers from may through till certainly now and onwards and if we allow ourselves another meter to add in some perennials that you don't need to think about so a lupin a rose and some achillea maybe a fever few in that one meter that's left so you could have one achillea one lupin maybe a rose that will take you to a garden full of flowers all season long just needs a bit of planning now so it's all very well me standing here showing you a bed and dividing it meter by meter if that is the only bed that you have then you want it to look pretty throughout the year so that is where the perennials come in so you can have your lupin at one end a rose at another achillea in the middle or however you want a peony maybe in there as well um, and then in and around it plant all of the other seedlings as and when they're needed we know we've got enough space it's just about how you space them out so if we're looking at that now and if you had in a lupin and a rose that is also flowering now that wouldn't be a bad border to look out on <laughs> now yes you want to be picking it but there will be spare capacity that will still be in flower so as long as you give your permission self permission to pick the flowers and pick sufficient for a vase full you will still have a bed full of flowers that still looks attractive or to look out to in your garden so really what I'm saying <laughs> that if all you want to do is provide flowers for your house a vase a week for your house 
certainly a four meter by one meter bed filled with a few annuals, a few perennials, a few biennials and some autumn sown hardy annuals, you will have a bed that will look spectacular whether you are picking the flowers or not. So hopefully that made a bit of sense um, that you don't need much space it just depends on your expectations. So if all you want is a few flowers for your house each week then you can pick it from your existing garden if you want to. Um, but a bed that has some interest all year round that looks attractive for pretty much all year round. We won't talk about the winter, nothing really looks great in the winter. Um, then it's possible, it's possible. A four metre bed is probably average for a normal garden and therefore you can really make use of that bed to have a cutting patch and a garden bed all in one. Now I'm doing a trial bed of three metres by one metres to see what I can grow. Now that is obviously excluding the perennial part because I just don't think there's room. Maybe next year when it's into its second season we can get a bit more, I can see what's happened and a bit more information about it but at the moment from my four metre bed example that I've got going here I can really see, I can cut back on the flowers to make it work for just a vase worth each week and get a wide variety of flowers. Yes, you need to be selective, so you will need to, you can't have three different varieties of larkspur or snapdragons or whatever. You need to be selective and pick the ones you really want because you only need a few plants of them. So you're looking at three to five plants of each variety that you want. So it needs to be the variety that you really want, your favorite. So color scheming it, making sure all of the colors blend together, which is why I've become more attuned to that really vivid blue cornflower, which is a lovely flower, really lovely flower, but it just doesn't fit in with the colour scheme that I've decided on this year because last year I tried to do everything and then there was not enough of anything to form a bouquet. So this year I tried to be really focused about the colour scheme that I was going for which are peachy pinks. Apart from when you look at the bright red wallflower that's emerged of which there's rather a lot of it so I'm not quite sure I think it was a mix so buying mixes may not be your best bet um, if you're planting on a small scale like this you need to be specific and pick the colour that you want. But other than that it's infinitely doable and if you want to find out more about how to start a small cut flower pa patch then take a look at the playlist that's going to be linked into the video at the end. But until next time, happy gardening!